I'm Sir SirTapTap, and the new Abyssrium Pull game just came out a bit ago. This is going to be a quick little introduction guide to the game, but we're not going to cover Hidden Fish in this guide. There will be another guide for that, uh, probably released at the same time. As always, I recommend the written guide over the video guides, really. There is already a written guide on my website. It'll be first link in the description. As always... Oops, almost forgot to say smash that bell icon, gamers. And check out my Patreon, and all of that other YouTube crap I have to say now. Hooray! So, if you've played the regular Abyssrium, Abyssrium Pole is basically the same kind of thing. Instead of a Coralite, you have an Iceberg. Instead of Coral, you, well, you still have Coral. Instead of Fish, you have Creatures. It actually still says Fish, though. <laughs> but, um, things work most similarly to the Freshwater Tank, if you've played that in Abyssrium. Um, what that means basically is that upgrading your Coralite or your Iceberg helps a lot. Upgrading your Coral um, really depends on where you are in the Vitality Curve. Um, it's not a waste by any means, but it's um, usually secondary to the Iceberg. Upgrading Fish is honestly um, <laughs> kind of a net loss. Um, I don't know why they managed to do that again. I really don't like the vitality curve in this game because you basically punish for getting fish. Every fish you create adds 3%, basically like a fusion fish, to your vitality total. So early on, it matters a little, very little, but it matters kind of. Uh, later on, it's just diminishing returns. And um, the point of the game is to collect the, the creatures. So, I mean, you will want to do it, but it's just kind of a shame that's how they managed to design it. Um, but first let's take a look at the Iceberg tab. It really works a lot like your, uh, regular Abyssrium. You've got your skills here. Song of the Moon is still on the right. It's called something different now, but it's the same thing. Bird Chorus is your volcanic eruption. It's just auto-taps for a couple minutes. Whale's Blessing is delicious food. Whale just pops by. No, you don't get to keep the whale and it gives you a lot of vitality. Basically, you want to cast all three skills as often as possible, and you want to watch that ad on the right to get your skill recharge. That's the basic core gameplay loop. Um, since buying fish is not as big of a deal, um, it's um, kind of what you want to do last. As you can see, I have kind of plenty enough to buy a fish, so I'm just going to go ahead and do so. Fish are still kind of your completion criteria, so I mean, you still want to complete fish, it's just that fish, it's satisfying for the player, not for the, um, not for gameplay progress, it's just kind of a shame. So, um, as always, you can watch an ad for Vitality, it's not really a lot, but, uh, if you want to minimize the amount of ads you watch in this game, the biggest thing by far is the skill recharge. I would basically recommend only watching that. And if you need pearls, which are the premium currency, um, you can watch an ad for that in the shop tab. Um, gems and pearls have been combined into one thing. You only get pearls. So everything uses the same currency now. Um, Blessing of Snow we have here. Um, that's kind of similar to one of the tank effects um, that is like a paid boost. You need it for some hidden fish, but what you can do is when you open the mystery chest here... Uh, once in a while, you will get a short boost of that from watching an ad there instead. So you don't have to spend pearls to get the unlocks. It's just a little bit faster. So I would recommend if you want to be stingy with pearls and save them for unlocks, which generally I strongly prefer in these games, especially if you're going to F to P stuff, you know, play free to play without, you know, spending money, which is usually what I do. Um, I really recommend saving your pearls for permanent unlocks and things like that. And use free methods instead whenever possible to avoid spending pearls for this stuff. So again, um, also these uh, these instant vitality things, uh, I've seen people get confused by this. You see where it says 6H? That means 6 hours worth of instant vitality, which is actually not very much at all. Um, you see, if you use all three of your skills in the proper way, which by the way, always cast Song of the Moon first because it multiplies the other ones. So cast Song of the Moon first and then cast the other two. Um, but yeah, the instant vitality, it, it actually says below there, get 172F vitality. Some people read that top one and they think it means 6H vitality, which at the very beginning of the game is incredibly substantial, right? But it's, it's, it's not that good. 
Um, so yeah, again, I would recommend not spending the pearls on any of those instant boosts. Now down here, this is where we upgrade our skills. Bird Chorus, Whale's Blessing, these are the things. Um, skills upgrade infinitely in this game. Uh, at least no one has found a limit below like skill level 75. So don't upgrade these thinking that you're going to max them out. Because there isn't a max and you will just run out of pearls no matter how many pearls you have. These are, you know, especially moons in the original game, Whale's Blessing and Moon Song here were the most significant ones. You would kind of want to keep them roughly equal in terms of level. Song of the Moon was usually better in terms of efficiency, but you needed both. Um, I don't know the exact curve yet. We haven't, nobody's run the numbers. I, I mean, we don't even know what the max level is, so, um... If anyone runs the numbers on the exact efficiency for the upgrades, go ahead and let me know. I, Frankly, I, I won't bother doing that myself. Um, down here at the very bottom, these last three are the artifacts from the first game. The singing Clam Coral is the Nautilus. It gives you some auto taps. Um, singing Grape Coral, that I believe... That's just the vitality boost. That just gives you a permanent vitality boost to all vitality sources. And the last one reduces your skill cast cost, or skill time, which that's a pretty significant one. I can't unlock it yet. But uh, these max out at level 10. Oh yeah, it tells you just before you buy it. And these cosmetically do appear in the world. The skills don't, so. If you want to buy one level for each just cosmetically, um, I would probably recommend doing that. Or in terms of pearls the other thing that you want to save up pearls for there are three characters here that you can um they call them characters they call them creatures they call them fish just, just pick a word hello parker how do you do you want to say hi no he doesn't want to say hi um so yeah you can get each of these each of these give you a larger production bonus and they get reduced fish cost um the thing is even if you buy these fish cost still increases uh, by a multiplier every time you buy one. So it's not as great as it sounds, but it is somewhat of a boost. And, you know, it's a permanent unlock. You get to, Once you buy one of these with pearls, you get to buy more with vitality. So if, you're, if you want to be frugal or if you don't want to spend real money on the game, it's probably save up to buy one of these creatures and then start upgrading some of these in here. Um, in terms of efficiency and most fun, that's currently my plan. Um, obviously, you can buy more pearls and stuff with this thing. That's don't really need to get that too much into that. Um, the main methods of obtaining pearls are achievements, just like in the first game. The achievement rewards are a little bit more stingy, but there's also less things to spend pearls on. So, I would say overall, this game does seem a bit slower than Abyssrium, but... It's kind of hard to compare, because, I mean, abyssrium has been doing weird things for, like, three years. This game just came out. Um, I definitely think you get less free gems. But, um... Yeah, that's just kind of how they tend to do things. Um, so, coral... You basically, it basically works just like abyssrium. The farther down the list the coral is, the more efficient it is in terms of vitality spent versus vitality earned. At least so far. That's how it always was in the main game, so I feel fairly confident saying it's probably like that in this one. So, coral... Don't micromanage your coral, but check your coral every once in a while. Um, definitely at least once per letter, so to speak, of vitality. As you can see, I have E vitality there. Once I get um, two more digits on there, I'll be into the F vitality. So... At least once per letter, check your coral, and once you can upgrade 100 times at once, generally that's when I'll do it. The coral upgrades are really inconsistent. Like, watch how much this increases. 200%. Okay, sometimes it's like 1,000%. It's really inconsistent and hard to tell what will matter. But that's why we just kind of leave corals as secondary. You do need to unlock coral to unlock fish. And it does give you your passive boost. As you can see, I actually... I actually get a good amount more from um, the coral vitality than per tap there. Uh, on the left, the the heart with the, you know, tapping icon is what I get per tap. The heart with the little hourglass is what I get um, 
one I get per second. So currently I'm at a point where it's more efficient to just kind of wait. Eventually that kind of swaps back and forth just like in the main game. So let's talk about fish. Fish unlocks are much more linear in this one. You'll always have a little reminder here of what your next fish is and you can tap it to go straight to the unlock requirement for it. That's kind of neat. Um, every, pretty much every fish requires hay. Own some amount of prior things or do something that you couldn't do before this very, you know, previous fish. Um, there are hidden fish. An interesting thing is that hidden fish have hints in game. There are 32, 36, I believe, hidden fish in this game, and you get a hint for a random one. Hidden fish are kind of sorted in that, you know, hidden fish one, you can unlock almost from the get-go. Hidden fish 36, you know, you need almost everything else in the game to get. So you'll get kind of lower level hidden fish until you unlock more. All of the hidden fish unlocks, you can unlock them at any time as long as you meet the requirements. You do not need to use the hidden fish hint thing. So head on over to my guide. I'll have a video guide released at the same time as this video, really. Um, and there's also a written guide on my site. Uh, I tend to recommend the written guide because I can update that freely. Um, videos are kind of like, you know, what's currently happening. Like if there's a new event released in this, the guide will make some mention of it. But I'll have to, you'll have to wait until there's a new video to see that. Um, on the YouTube, so you kind of work hand in hand. Um, hidden fish requirements, um, they're a little bit more, they're a little simpler so far. Usually it's something like own three fish, um, take a photo of a fish. There are new couples photos, which I'll show you how to do that. So the camera works basically the same. Um, so let's take a couple photo, right? Couple photo just means two fish are kind of near each other, or two creatures. Um, if you're having trouble with the couple photo, the best thing usually is to try to kind of like take a picture, and then you'll notice I can freeze frame it and still move around the reticle and everything. Um, I can even change which fish I'm focused on. Oh. Well. In the old Abyss Room you could do that. I guess you can't do that anymore. That's weird. Why can't I... There we go. Hold on. I'm... I'm... Nope, never mind. They removed that feature. Huh. Um, but yeah, just kind of like move it around and see. I'll try to make a couple photo with that other thing. I guess it's not close enough. Um, the couple photos are a little weird. Oh. Did it work? I think it did work. The couple photo succeeded thing is weird because it doesn't actually show the fit creature you got a picture of. Um, but you just kind of... Oh, there it is. You just kind of want another creature close to it, so, um... And a nice thing with this is if we get a not-couple photo... Oops, what did I do? No, no, no. Um... I, I don't care. Uh, if you take a picture of a lone fish, which <laughs> I'm having some trouble doing... <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, if you take a picture of a single fish... It'll tell you what the fish is. I keep getting couples photos, so it doesn't matter, though. Ross Seal. There we go. So, if you don't know what a f creature is, you can just tap it. You can get a picture of it. Actually, I think it might show you as you're following it. Yeah, you don't even need to take the picture. You can just uh, follow it along. So, you can find out which creatures you're trying to take a picture of there. Or... No, no, no. I hate... <laughs> I hate mobile games sometimes. A lot of times, honestly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's how you do couples photos. Um, if there's a creature in the list and you don't have it, a lot of people get confused by the lemming. You, there's a hidden fish that you need to unlock, and you just need to look at the hidden fish list and get that fish. That's all there is to it. Um, just like the regular Abyssrium, there are never any alternative unlocks. If it says you have to do a thing, you have to do that thing. That's all there is to it. Um, there is no Facebook feature in this game, which is fortunate considering they broke the, they broke the feature in the old game, and it's been broken for over a year. And there's just a fish that's completely impossible to get because of it. Um, the manage fish menu is much improved. So there's kind of a collection and there's a placement thing. You can save tanks that have like a specific set of fish, which is really neat. Um, this is a feature we've been asking for for Abyssrium for years, really. That's right, Parker. So 
you can just kind of drag and drop and you can select how many fish you want to put in from a specific species. Get all of these boys out there. Get that boy in. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> and you can just one click reset everything. Take it all out. And then do a long press. Drag these boys in. Drag this friend in. Let's see, much, much better. <laughs> much better than the old way. Um of doing things so I'm a little, a little bit less afraid of events in this game because managing fish will be less of a pain and we have kind of that stored you can have like a stored theme of fish um, I believe the limit of fish is increased when you buy coral that's the way it was in the old game I forgot to confirm but I'm pretty sure that's what it is um, so collection is a little bit different it will not show hidden fish in here, even with question mark names. So you'll have to go to the guide to see all the hidden fish. Not a big deal, really. Um, it tracks some little stats and stuff of how many times you've tapped their bubbles and stuff. So that is actually really useful for unlocks. There, there are some nice features that the original game could have kind of used. So if I can see, oh, I've tapped the bubble a hundred times before above this guy. So, if you need an unlock for that. Fortunately, none of the unlocks seem that extreme, like, oh, tap a thousand bubbles. And while I'm talking about bubbles, um, so what that means, when something says tap bubble above a fish, as you can see, this fish has a little heart up over it. Um, so, you just tap that icon, and it gives you a little boost of vitality, but the, what the real thing is that certain unlocks require you to uh, tap a certain amount of bubbles above fish. The only thing you really can do about that is, if you need a specific time to fish, make sure it's in your tank. Uh, possibly, if there's too many other fish, store some of the other fish, just so... Um, because only so many bubbles will appear at once. So you can kind of increase the odds by having multiple of the same fish and less of other fish in your tank. Um, one quick note about in-app purchases. The vitality boost and stuff... Uh, it's really not as good as it sounds. It sounds really significant, but it's added kind of at a base level where it's like, it's not, it's not usually like as significant as it reads on the paper. It, it sounds like you'll have, oh wow, you'll have more than double vitality, but it's, it's really kind of not because it's certain other multipliers are usually applied afterwards. And the fish creation cost, as I said before, the fish creation keeps going up in price. So... Basically think, okay, would I spend this written price to purchase this creature and see that in my tank? View it as purely cosmetic. Just, would you spend that to see this in the tank? Ignore the other stuff. You know, you still get it, but it's probably not nearly significant gameplay-wise as you would think. So, consider them cosmetic unlocks, because that's, that's really what they are. And that's pretty much... All there is to it, there is, um, the camera feature is kind of upgraded because, um, as we can see, we have above ground and underwater stuff going on. Um, it does look better than regular Abyssrium, but kind of, we have this kind of default view, which you might be used to from the main game, or from the original game, rather. Um, but you can tap the little move around icon and kind of lock it in place. And then when, even when we go into the menu, it stays here. I've wanted a feature like this for a while, ever since they added the expand feature. In expand, you can move around the camera and get a good look. But um, it wasn't like that if you're trying to like actually play the game. Um, and you can always press the reset button if you just want to go back to this kind of see everything view. And um, one issue some people have is the game will start up in Korean. Um, just tap through the tutorial and hit that little gear icon at the top right. That's where all the settings are. Um, you can change your language from there, so it's not a problem. It's just the game just doesn't have the best detection. It wouldn't be a Abyssrium if it didn't have bugs, let's be real. <laughs> um, some people have ad issues. Sometimes resetting your advertise... Excuse me. Sometimes resetting your advertising ID fixes that. Um, your device will always have a different... Just Google your device name and how to reset advertising ID. It's somewhere in your phone settings. It's not something in the game. Um, and another thing to note, this game does have cloud saves. Um, it does appear to automatically cloud save. If you need to switch phones urgently, you might want to manually save and load from the cloud. That's in the gear menu again. Um, it does not currently have the Facebook save because 
they see the developers seem to have some real troubles with Facebook. Um, I've got my own troubles with Facebook, so I don't entirely blame them. But for now, um, you probably won't be able to swap save files between operating systems because that was the way to do it in the old um, the old game was with the Facebook save. And that's pretty much it. Um, this can't be Antarctica, right? That's right, buddy. So, fun fact, um, the game has both North and South Pole creatures, as well as some not actually from the Pole creatures. So, um, it's not, it's not at either Pole, it's just kind of in Magical Fantasy Land. As evidenced by the, like, you know, frozen water coral. They're, they're just kind of made up coral names, if you'll notice. They're just things like Snowflake Plant, Ice Bracken. So it's just kind of here. Um, oh, final note, um, if you have a PC or laptop or whatever, um, an easier way to play idle games like this that require you to tap the screen a lot, um, you can set up a macro in, I usually use Nox Player is what it's called. Just search for tap tap Nox Player and I show you how to set it up. It's an Android emulator that lets you um, download the game. You can download your regular save file. You can log in with your Google account and everything. It just, it is Android. It's not like some weird fake thing. No, it just is Android that runs on your PC, basically. And you can play the game in here and you can just have something that just mindlessly taps for you so you don't get, genuinely get arthritis, which I, when I played the original Abyssrium a lot, like a lot, a lot, right around when it came out, like I was feeling it in my wrist. I was like, oh dang, I, I gotta stop that. I actually got compression gloves and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, don't, don't hurt yourself playing the game. The um, If you really need to grind and stuff, I really do recommend checking out getting an Android emulator. I think there are apps that do auto-tap stuff for you. I don't really know how those work. I don't really mess with those. Uh, I do know that some people swear by those, so maybe check those out. Um, they're usually paid or ad-supported, but um, whereas Nox is kind of just, you just install it. I guess it has like some ads, but not like you know, mobile game ads where it's some, like, fake YouTuber screaming at you and like, oh, wow, this game is amazing graphics and all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, well, that's pretty much it. That is Abyssrium Pole. It's pretty neat, I guess. Um, I, I just kind of hope that events don't happen for a few months at the very least because that, that's kind of what killed the old game for me. The events just, the requirements were so brutal and so unfun, and it's just like, I just don't want to play anymore. So I, I kind of hope they keep this chill, roll update things, improve the main game over a period of months before you add crazy events. Don't make me watch a thousand ads to unlock one fish. Looking at you, writing killer whale. Looking at you. Um... Definitely feels like an upgrade from the current Abyssrium in terms of visuals and base fish unlocks. Um, I'm not, I don't, I don't quite have that feeling of very beginning first playing Abyssrium. It didn't quite reignite the magic for me or whatever you want to say. But um, you're still enjoying the game. Poke around in it. Um, I do think there's some neat stuff. There's some, there's some silly stuff like. One thing I can't believe they keep doing. Um, look at the Weddle Seals unlocks here. There's two unlocks, right? Own White Barnacle, complete 20 achievements. 30 achievements, whatever. Uh, but then over on the right, there's another There's another unlock. And sometimes people don't see that. And they're like, oh, I did the things. And it, it, there's all check marks. Why don't they just put that... Why don't they just put that requirement under the other two requirements? They're a fish with three requirements. I don't. I don't understand why they would just... Whatever, it's, it's weird. But, that's Abyssrium Pole. If you need the hidden fish, there'll be another video with all of that stuff. Um, if my guides help you, make sure to check out my Patreon. Or you can um, give me a one-time amount on Kofi. I just set, I just set that up. Is that coffee? Kofi? Kofi? I, I don't know how you pronounce that, but it just lets you give people a tip, basically. So, have fun. Alright gamers, remember to like, subscribe, and smash that bell. Frog, what are you doing in my house? I, I, I would just get out.